Now it's time for RTV 101, where we discuss practical questions to help equip you to share your faith more effectively. And here to help me talk about a Christian perspective on the solar system is astrophysicist Dr. Jess Waring. Welcome back, Jeff. Uh, it's good to be here, Krista. It's kind of odd to talk about a Christian perspective on the solar system because it seems kind of universal, if you will. <laughs> you know, I think that it's an interesting question that we're going to look at today because you get on the internet and there's a lot of ideas out there. And one of those ideas that I've encountered on more than one occasion is the idea that the Bible teaches that the earth is the center of the solar system. It's actually kind of a common idea that non-Christians think that this is what the Bible actually teaches. So let's talk about that. Yeah, you know, I, I, part of that I see is I think there are ways that people try and look for how can you put Christianity in the worst possible light. And, you know, there's some segment of Christians that say the earth is the center of the solar system. And so that gets amplified. I think that's done with young earthism at some level too. Uh, but to say that the Bible says that the earth is the center of the solar system, I think is misreading what, what scripture has to say. Uh, yeah. You know, one of those passages is, you know, Psalm 104, 5, you know, where it talks about, you know, God's being described as, you know, wrapping himself in a cloak of light and putting his beams in the chambers and he's established the earth uh, on its foundation so it will never move. And that's one of those verses being used to say, ah, see, the earth doesn't move. It's got to be the center of the solar system. But that doesn't seem to be what the, the psalmist is getting at there. Yeah, it really seems to be kind of a misunderstanding of scripture, almost like an urban legend that this is what the Bible teaches that the earth is at the center of the solar system, but there's no verse you can go to where it, it actually says that. It's more of these verses about the earth being fixed on its foundation. Exactly, you know, and, and quite honestly, it doesn't surprise me that the scripture never talks about that because what ancient person would think, oh, there are these orbs orbiting around various things. I mean, that's a very modern way of looking at the solar system and the cosmos. And so why would the ancients have that sort of language in there, especially since that's not an accurate description of things? Yeah. Uh, you know, so I think there are times where scripture alludes to things that people are going to learn later, but I never see scripture alluding to things that aren't true. So. Right. So where does this idea that the earth is the center of the solar system even come from? If it's not the Bible, where, where do we get this idea? Well, I mean, it at least has some historical roots because, you know, you go out into the night sky. If you look up there, at least watch over a few nights, you'll see that things move across the sky. I mean, every night the stars move across the sky. And even as you're watching, there are these certain stars uh, that we call planets that they will even change where they are in the sky. And, and the so, horizon doesn't seem to move. Right, exactly. So, yeah. So okay. from the perspective of the Earth, everything else is moving we're the ones that are still in solid. And so it kind of makes sense to think that, okay, yeah, everything's moving around us. And, uh, you know, kind of put that even in more context, you know, if you go into the astrology and even just from a how do things work perspective, uh, you want to start predicting, okay, where do things go? So you see these patterns. You notice that the stars move across the sky every night the same way. They shift a little bit each night. And then when you go look at the planets, now you start wanting to track out, okay, how could we make a model where we can predict where these things are going to be? And for the longest time, one of the best models of doing that was the Ptolemaic system, where the Earth was the center, everything went around the Earth, and with some circles and some circles on circles in various ways, you could make very good predictions of where everything was going to be months, years later. And so that's kind of the, the model that was used to do the calculations, whether it was actu an actual accurate picture of the way things were or not, it was a very effective model for making the calculations. Then along come Copernicus and Galileo and say, wait a minute, the Earth is not the center of the solar system. We have this thing called the sun, and that's, that's what Right. Well, well and, and you know, it's it's interesting. Even that, it's kind of characterized as oh, there's this kind of pre-scientific thought, and then people were coming along. And even if you go back, there was the actual cosmology and the physical cosmology. The actual was how do things actually work, and then there's the physical, which was how do we predict things. And part of the reason Copernican model didn't catch on is that it was no better at predicting things as long as you use circles. And so until you started talking about ellipses and other things then the Copernican model could actually make better predictions and it's a better description of the way things were. And so we look at it now, it's like, oh yeah, with ellipses and uh, the sun at the center, that's clearly the better way to make predictions. But it took a while to get to that place where this more accurate model actually could make better predictions. So back to our question of, you know, how did the Bible get mixed up in this? Of Well, this is what the Bible teaches, that 
that the the Earth is the center of the solar system. I'm imagining what happened is that there was the these verses about the Earth being mm -hmm. fixed, and then that got kind of squashed together with the Ptolemaic view of mm -hmm. the Earth being the center. That was the dominant view of the day, right. and those things just kind of got smashed together, and mm -hmm. then up grew this, this idea that that's actually what the Bible teaches. Right, and, and I think it's also going to be intimately tied in with the whole Galileo affair because Galileo was kind of taking Copernicus's ideas and saying this is the way to do it. And that's all often characterizes, oh, you've got the scientists over there figuring out how things work and you got those backwards, goofy theological Christians and I'm being intentionally yeah. obnoxious there. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> being intentionally obnoxious. Um, but that's the way it's characterized is, you know, you got science advancing and cr religion holding everything right. back. And the reality of it is you go back and you look at that and there was, a f there was far more complexity to that. In fact, I've got a book of expert historians looking at this saying that if this had happened 50 years earlier, 50 years later, outside of the context of the Protestant Reformation and the Catholic Counter-Reformation, that none of this would have been a big issue at all. And so it's something that kind of got a, conflated into a much bigger deal because of some political and religious battles that really wasn't a big deal at all. So to turn it on a positive note, mm -hmm. you know, that this is, this is something that many uh, skeptics like to bring up, but actually we could turn it to a positive, that this can help us build a bridge because the earth may not be the center of the solar system, but it certainly is special. It certainly is unique. Mm -hmm. And that, is a worthy conversation. You know, it really is. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things I think Copernicus and others have taught us is that Earth isn't in any phys special location as like the center of the galaxy, center of the solar system, center of the universe, but it's in a very special location in its ability to host life. It needs to be so far away from a star. It needs to be around the right kind of star. It needs to be tipped a certain way, have the right size moon. You, there's a lot of things that need to be in place in order for life to exist on a planet. And especially when you talk about life like us, which can talk about and think about things, there's a whole s s slew of added requirements to get to that sort of complexity of life. And so Earth really is, as of right now, it's the only planet in the universe that we're aware of that is capable of hosting life. Now, the only ones we can really measure particularly well are those around our solar system, some of the ones in the nearby stars, but Earth stands out by far in all of those in its capacity to host life like humanity. And I think that's a pretty remarkable thing. Very special, very, very special, special planet that we live on. Thanks, Jeff. And I wanna encourage you to check out Jeff's blog, Impact Events.